All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Monday. Today we will be starting our new project and it is a mock trial. So in this video, you will find exactly what you need to be successful for the duration of the project. At this time, you should have a packet in front of you that has your name on the top of it. If you do not have a packet in front of you, pause the video and pass those out. The packet should either be blue, green, or pink. All right, assuming that you have your packets and you're ready to go, you're going to need that with you to fill in some essential information throughout this video. First things first, at the bottom of the first page is a calendar. If you remember from our monument project, we follow these calendars when we have longer term assignments. So please use this for reference. Today, the 11th, we are going to do the introduction and assign your roles, as well as completing the background of the case, reading, and graphic organizer. Just for reference, depending on what case you're in, those cases will be presented. We will be in session on the 19th, 20th, and 21st. And then the actual assessment, it's actually for this entire unit, will be on Monday, the 25th, and the 26th. And more information on all of that to come. So why are we doing a mock trial? Over the course of the next two weeks, you'll become an important figure in one of three different Supreme Court cases. By the end of the mock trial, you will be able to, number one, understand courtroom trial roles, procedures, and protocols. Number two, practice argument, collaboration, and critical thinking skills as to prepare and present the case. And number three, develop clear arguments that address multiple perspectives and supported with evidence and connect with precedent cases. In general, all the stuff we've learned in this unit up until now is going to be applied. The idea is that we are modeling the real life application of constitutional principles to actual scenarios. So first things first, Below where it says introduction on the top sheet with those three bullet points I just read are roles. These are the roles of a courtroom. So first, it says represents clients in criminal or civil cases, prepares arguments, interviews witnesses. This is the attorney or a lawyer. So in the box to the left of that description, write down lawyer slash attorney. We're going to use those terms interchangeably here. All right, next, the next person in the courtroom, this person controls procedures during trial. They interpret the law, they advise the jury, especially if they have questions about the application of the law, and their job is to remain impartial. You may know who this is. This is a judge. So in the box to the left of that description, write judge. Next, this person testifies in court about facts or events that they observed. They are interviewed by lawyers on both sides and they are sworn in before giving testimony to assure that they are speaking the truth. Who is this? This is the witness. So again, in the box to the left, write witness. Next, this person, actually this group of people's job is to determine whether a defendant is in fact guilty. They work with their peers to reach a verdict. They may only use the facts and evidence presented to determine guilt and their job is not to determine the punishment. So who does this describe? This describes a juror, the jury. So the top four terms are the four main roles of a courtroom. This courtroom that we will reenact next week when we are in session will have all four of those groups of people. There's two more terms that are specific um, in explaining groups of people in a courtroom that are going to be used as well. The first is the person who brings the complaint against another party. We just got done reading a bunch of cases that are real Supreme Court cases throughout history. Each of them was initiated by this group. 
They are presented by an attorney, or they're represented by an attorney, and they have the burden of proving that someone else has violated their rights, especially in a civil court case, which is what we are going to be modeling. This is called the plaintiff. So, for example, in all of your cases, including Galt, um, the first name is the plaintiff. So, Brown v. Board of Education, Brown was the plaintiff. Texas v. Johnson, Texas was the plaintiff. That is the person who brings the case up. On the other side of that, in a courtroom, there is a person defending themselves in court. It could be one specific person, it could be an institution, it could be a business, it could even be an entire government. They are also represented by an attorney, and they are the ones that are accused of violating the other party's rights. This is called the defendant. Defendant. So, each of you will be either a witness or an attorney in this case. But each of your attorneys and witnesses will either represent the plaintiff side, the prosecution side, or the defense, which is the defendant. So, in order to understand where we're headed, you have to understand that each of you is going to, like I said, be either a witness or an attorney. In order to excel at this, you're going to be in this four column right here. This is for witness, this is for attorney. If you are a witness, which I will show you in just a moment, you have to accurately and confidently answer all questions and display a thorough understanding of his or her character. You have to basically become that person in the course of this week of school before your trial. On the other side, if you're an attorney, your job is to collaborate with your team to develop meaningful and direct questions for the witnesses. The attorney has to speak confidently and clearly. So depending on what you are, that's how you're being evaluated as far as participation goes in this project. So first period, these are your roles. You're the first ones up. And I think I showed you this in class. What I need you to do is find your role, and then at the bottom of the first page, I need you to write that role right here. So for example, Sylvia, hi Sylvia, you are a defense lawyer. So you can write lawyer or attorney on this line and then make sure you circle the defense side. Patrick, you are a witness. You are specifically Mr. Tillman, which you'll learn more about tomorrow. You're going to put Mr. Tillman on this line. And then since it says D next to it and it's blue, I color code everything in this project, you're the defense as well. So take a second, look at your roles, and fill in the bottom of that page. For other periods, I've posted everybody's roles on Schoology. So if you'd like to pause this video and in today's folder, you can see every other class's roles. Again, pause the video, go find your roles and fill it in at the bottom. Now that you have filled in your role, if you do not have a role, which sometimes that happens, Mrs. Lopez makes mistakes, um, email me and I will figure that out um, as soon as I can to get you a specific responsibility. Um, I did double, triple, quadruple check, but obviously mistakes happen and I will try to figure it out in real time on my phone so that you have something to do today. All right, so now that you have your roles, we're gonna flash forward here. What is the goal today? Your job is to learn about your case. In your packet, if you flip to the next page, you'll see that it says something like background of case. And there's a reading. The reading is going to give you the context you need to understand what happened in your case. So you're going to read the background. And then on the next page, flip one more page, you'll see there's a graphic organizer. It might say the facts at the top. You're going to fill in that graphic organizer using information from the reading. Tomorrow, you'll be collaborating with your teams to prepare for your trial. So, specifically, again, this is the bag the flag case. It's a pink packet, right? This is your reading. You're going to be filling in this graphic organizer with the information from this reading. 
If you have any questions, let me know. Again, we will navigate through this together, but that cal calendar is a great reference if you are confused about what's happening next. And again, if you do not have a role or your name is mentioned twice, please email me and I will try to problem solve on the fly. Okay, again, have a great Monday and I will see you all tomorrow.